What's going on everybody? Today I'm doing something a little bit different that I don't normally do on this channel, but today I will be doing a tutorial. Right now I'm building out this uh, Toyota-based motorhome to live in. One thing that's wrong with it is this Dometic three-way fridge. Uh, these, these are pretty standard for old RVs and uh, different components on them will start to go. This currently works only on propane and even if it was to work on 12 volt, which is what I want, uh, it still draws 10 amps at 12 volts, uh, which is just too much to have as a constant draw. These are not compressor fridges, um, so they, they won't shut off as often and just they're just not as efficient. And so because this takes 10 amps, if you had this on and you were trying to use your battery bank for other things, you might struggle depending on those things and the amperage that those need. So to solve that issue, I've teamed up with Chili Moose and they make this awesome compressor cooler. Um, this is their 52 liter one and it's very well insulated. It's only a fridge or a freezer, so it goes all the way down to negative 18 degrees. And this uses a compressor. So once this reaches temperature, it actually shuts off and it only draws five amps at 12 volts. When it is drawing power, it uses half as much as this one. And then once it reaches temperature, it's gonna shut off and just remain cool. So um, this was a great option and I'm actually going to show you guys how to take out this three-way fridge and install this instead. So let's get into it. Let's put this amazing cooler inside of this RV where the three-way fridge used to be. All right, so let's start attacking this fridge a little bit. So I'm taking the uh, door off to get at these ones here. So this is the back panel here. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what we can detach and what might cause us some issues. This is all the 12 volt system right here. This, this casing come, can come right off. This is for plugging the fridge in um, through the 110 volt. Uh, this is all the, comp the cooling system and a venting system for the propane. Here's the propane right here. Um, just apply a wrench here and here and twist off. Uh, I'm gonna take these screws out here. There's another one right over here. That's what the fridge is sitting on. All right, so once this is off, this is gonna be pretty standard. Um, you can get away with bending it a little bit, but you're gonna wanna cap this off. So yeah, you can just cap this little end right here. So once you take all those things off, it just slides right out. All right, here we go. So there's two different ways I can attempt to get this out of here. I can take off these screws right here. I took one off and this thing will actually come right off this faceplate, leaving this area 20 inches. This thing here is about 20, and a quarter. So it's gonna just, just fit through if I do that and everything comes off. Or what I've seen other people do is actually take all the back stuff off, leaving this as 17 inches. So I think I'm gonna have to take all this back stuff off. I don't know. Okay, so I've tried a couple different things. Um, I don't know really how to get all this back stuff off. Took some of the front off, but it looks like there's a bit of a metal plane that it's actually all screwing into um, so I've thought of a different solution and this is gonna work in a class C motorhome but it might not work in a trailer where this door is your best option and just taking those panels off I'm actually gonna go through the front so I lifted up this top part and this will fit nice and easy down in there and I do have leather seats so I'm gonna put a towel over them um, just so that none of these metal parts on the bottom will cut it up so it's gonna pop down right here on this seat, if all goes well. <laughs> 
All right, so anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> I got this out and the cooler fits in there perfect. I'm going to have to adjust a couple things just to make it more functional because it is narrower, it's shorter. So that gives me room for a little bit of storage up top. And uh, actually there's um, already 12 volt power. These wires are actually live. So I can connect directly to those through the 12 volt plug. Um, the back here is open. This actually covered it up quite a bit. Um, so now there's a lot of air gaps that can get through, which will need covering up. Um, there's insulation that's now visible, so I'm gonna be covering that and uh, just making it look really good now. So what I've decided to do is just remove this and then actually put it at the back to create insulation and still vent air. And then potentially I'm gonna cover it with plastic and seal it off with silicone. Um, and then it looks okay because I was thinking of doing a whole bunch of work there um, to cover this up, but it doesn't actually need to be as insulated as the other one. Um, it's not a bad idea because it will keep your cooler just running more efficiently to have it insulated from perhaps your warm van or trailer. Um, but I'm going to remove it for aesthetics and functionality so I don't have exposed um, fiberglass. This one I would consider keeping a lot more than the other one because it's next to the stove. So whenever that gets hot, it's gonna radiate through. I'm still gonna remove it, but uh, definitely just decide for yourself what you wanna do. So closing off this end cap of this propane actually caused a lot more issues for me than it really should have. So I'm actually a complete novice when it comes to any sort of gas fittings or anything like that. So I made the mistake of going to the plumbing section um, and getting this guy because what I looked up online was a sort of an end-to-end -end, male to male and then getting a cap on here and uh, the cap I put on I actually um, it was it stripped it so then it just leaked through and propane just got through this whole system so this isn't actually what you need to do so the exact part that you need is for this system is a 3 8 flare cap and it needs to be for gas systems. What I did was it wasn't at any uh, hardware stores, although you might have luck at yours. I actually went to an RV store. I said I'm taking my three-way fridge out and they knew exactly what part I needed. And it cost three bucks and I threw it in um, and then I just put a little bit of soap on it and if there's any bubbling it means that there's leaks and there's no leaks so we're good to go on this part. Okay everyone, so I've got some work to do. I'm gonna be building a uh, drawer for this to sit on um, but before I do that, I just want to test this thing out a little bit. This is the Chili Moose 52 liter. I've already mentioned that. This, uh, it came with this cool little case that's actually insulated. So that's going to just uh, keep this thing cold longer, preserving your battery. Um, it has a 12 volt plug on the back that comes out and I'm just gonna plug it in right here. Um, this is just to test it. I'm actually gonna wire it in. So right now we have a temperature reading of 11. I'm just taking a look at the manual now and uh, there's a couple settings. There's actually some switches on the back that you can set um, for when it starts and when it shuts off. So then you're not left with a dead battery, um, which is pretty cool. So it goes down all the way to negative 20 if you want it to, or let's bring it up. I just want it to act as a fridge. So that would be three degrees. Pressing this button will go between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So there's a couple different modes that you can run on. There's, um, if you keep scrolling through this, you can go to Eco or um, HH, which is maximum running mode. Yeah, so it says the economy mode will run the compressor at a lower speed to save power. Maximum runs the compressor at a higher speed, increasing power. And then there's some error messages. If you get any of those, um, it'll tell you exactly what's not working. If you have low battery, uh, if you need to change the fan, if you need to power off and the compression startup problem. So let's let it sit while uh, I do some measuring in here and um, we'll see how long it takes to get down to three degrees from 11. As you can see, 
the temperature is now two degrees above freezing and um, let me see that is how much Fahrenheit 35 degrees Fahrenheit and I was on eco and I could hear the compressor coming on in the back and now it's off so it went one degree colder than I set it for and it looks like it's just literally chilling doesn't feel like there's any coldness seeping out of this thing. It's super well insulated and it's very cold inside. Definitely an accurate temperature gauge, but the compressor's off, so it's just gonna keep cycling. Um, this thing is awesome. I'm gonna set it for way colder. And let you guys hear the uh, compressor come on. So the compressor just came on. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's like a fan. It just sounds like a small fan. It's really quite quiet. Alright everyone, so that's how you get rid of a three-way fridge and replace it with a compressor fridge. This one here is from the Chili Moose company. They helped out a lot, so if you guys um, got any value from this and are looking for a good 12-volt compressor fridge, check the links in the description. And there will be a couple more videos like this. I'm going to show you guys how I installed my solar, um, how I did my backup camera, all sorts of cool stuff. And if you guys want to check out some of the smaller things like how I painted this and um, how I did the backsplash and kind of the full reno process, all of those videos will be on my second channel, which is Forrest Stevens, and a link for that in the description as well. I'll see you guys next week, Alternative Dwellings on Monday, and I'm going to start posting these videos here on Wednesday, um, just some of the bigger builds, this one, the solar, like I said. Um, so look forward for those, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the comment section. Let me know if this helped you decide on what you're going to do in your motorhome.